Sometimes JWST is looking at enormous distant galaxies that shimmer with all the glory of the universe. And sometimes it takes pixelated shots of objects in our own solar system. And sometimes those pixely images are the most compelling ones to come from the telescope. This time, JWST has been looking at Enceladus, a moon of Saturn that's a really interesting candidate for a potentially habitable place in our solar system. What we're seeing is an enormous plume of water being ejected from the south pole of the Saturnian moon. It covers more than 9,600 kilometers, which is as large as Europe and Asia combined and would stretch from Ireland to Japan. This is the first time we've ever seen the full extent of the plume like this. And it gives us a really interesting insight into how this moon could be feeding water to the rest of the environment around the prettiest planet in our neighborhood. Feel free to fight about that opinion in the comments though, if you disagree with my planetary prettiness power ranking. In this image taken by JWST's near infrared camera NERCAM, the moon itself is just the white square in the middle. Of course, the moon isn't really a square, but it's so small here that it just occupies a single pixel in JWST's view of the universe. That might sound surprising given that JWST images galaxies that are millions and billions of light years away in exquisite detail. And Enceladus is a relatively nearby 1.2 billion kilometers or just 0.00013 light years. The issue is that Enceladus is 20 times smaller than Earth at just 505 kilometers in diameter, while the galaxies shown in full Webbian glory are unfathomably huge, often hundreds of thousands of light years in diameter. That's why Enceladus is less than a pixel for JWST. It's close by, but so ridiculously small that even our largest space telescope only sees it as a pixel or two. The reason that we're interested in this moon is that it has a fascinating subsurface ocean in between an icy outer crust and a rocky core. It's similar to some of Jupiter's moons in that respect, which I've talked about a lot in other videos. But in short, this is cool because it provides conditions similar to those where life seems to have originated from on Earth deep salty oceans with nutritious vents at the bottom that could well be feeding tiny life forms. That's speculation of course, but it's why we think these wet moons are really interesting. It's also why we're sending special missions just like Juice, or Jimmy as I like to call it, to Jupiter. Check out this video up here if you'd like to learn more. Enceladus is also becoming well known for its jets too, where geyser-like volcanoes spew jets of ice, water vapor, and organic chemicals high into the Enceladan sky. We've seen the jets before, most notably from the Cassini mission that spent over a decade exploring Saturn and its moons, and we already knew that they were hundreds of kilometers tall. Now, we actually know they're thousands of kilometers instead. While Cassini saw them up close, and even flew through them to sample their chemical makeup, JWST's view of them from much further away makes it way easier to see how truly huge they are. We were able to confirm the height of the plumes using spectra from the Integral Field Unit, IFU, which is on the NERSPEC instrument on board JWST. And in this image, every single blue pixel has a spectrum that confirms water. During an IFU observation, the instrument captures an image along with a spectra of every single pixel in that image which allows us to see how properties change from place to place in the image. Here, it saw a lot of water. Not only did we learn how big the jets are, they're 20 times larger than the moon itself, but we also saw just how fast they're moving and how much water is really being ejected. The moon is spewing out about 300 liters per second, which would fill an Olympic sized pool in just a couple of hours. For comparison, that would take a normal garden hose about two weeks to do. Of course, all of this water has to go somewhere. And a lot of it in this case is feeding a huge torus that surrounds Saturn. As the moon zips around Saturn in just 33 hours, it leaves behind a trail of water that has developed into a donut surrounding the planet, living in the same place as Saturn's E-ring. It turns out Saturn has a water ring to add to its impressive ring collection, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Using the spectra data and imaging, we know that about 30% of the ejected water stays in that torus, 
and the other 70% escapes and supplies a lot of the rest of the Saturnian system with water. We often question how water made it to Earth, but at least we now have a clue as to how water could make it to some other places in the solar system. In these spectra, all of the JWST data is plotted in the white lines, and each coloured line is what our best theories would predict that data to look like. The different lines here are for the centre of the image in green, the big plume in purple, and a torus cross-section in orange, as illustrated by this picture next door. The heights of the lines just represent different brightnesses for different parts of the image. But the amazing thing here is how similar the shapes of the curves are. That's how we can work out what's in the ejector and in the torus, and how we know how much of the water is sticking around in that torus. JWST will continue to study this moon, and will be one of our best tools ever for doing so, allowing us to better understand this moon and its incredible volcanoes and plumes. And it will also help inform future probing and new missions to help understand things like the depth of the subsurface ocean on Enceladus, the thickness of the icy crush, and much more. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below, and subscribe if you're new. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!